Hello and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 7th grade concept of data sets with populations, specifically how we can make inferences about those populations and we'll do it in 5 minutes or less. So we have a sample data set here. Principal asking 50 random students, that's going to be kind of important, to name their favorite color. So based on the answers below, what can you infer about all the students? So here's what we're doing here. This principal wants to know about all the students in the school, but does not have time to ask every student in the school because that's going to be very large. So sometimes what data scientists will do is they will just ask random people and then they will make some inferences about how those people represent the larger population. So typically we are going to be able to make some statements on a continuum. So think of a continuum like this. And so we are probably going to see one end of the continuum right here, not at all, like it is completely unlikely to happen. The other end of the continuum is over here. It's very certain. Those are going to be some hard inferences to make. Most of what we're going to do are going to live right here in between. So think of this as kind of like your your half point right here, right? So we've got less likely. That's an inference we can make all day long because we can, we're not 100% sure, but something is less likely. And then we've got on the other side of that midpoint, we've got more likely. Once again, it's not on either extreme as the certain or not at all. And then if we really want something right in the middle, we could just say equally likely. I mean, it's the numbers support it's exactly the same. So we can compare these two. And so we can say students are more likely. So let's just come up with a few examples here to choose. And let's just take a look at some of our examples here. We've got red and black. Let's just take those, those two. More likely to choose red. I'm going to put the number here just so we can see it than black. So that is a true statement that we can make. Black is 8. So that is an inference we can make about all the students in the school. They are more likely to choose red than black. Now we don't know because we haven't we haven't asked every student but in our random population there were 13 red and there were 8 black. So we can make something else like this. We can say less likely to choose, and we'll find a smaller number. So let's say purple. So that's going to be 7. Then and let's find one that's larger than that. So let's say blue. That's 12. We don't know. If we ask every student in the school, maybe more people like purple. But in our random sample, the inference shows us that we have a less likely chance to choose purple than we do blue. We could also say that uh, they are equally likely, and I'm sure you notice this when you're looking at the data, equally likely to choose, and we've got two that are actually uh, equal here, purple, and we've got yellow, excuse me, and orange, both five. Now, a lot of times when we're looking at this at the seventh grade level, they are going to combine a little bit. So let's say we are more likely to choose, and let's pick two of the smaller ones. So let's say black and orange. So black is eight or orange. We're going to use or rather than and because they're not going to pick both. They're going to pick one or the other. But when we see black or orange, we're going to combine those two. So that basically means we've got a number of 13 here because we got 8 and 5. They're more likely to choose black or orange than red. Actually, not red would be equally likely, so let's make that blue since that is 12. So if we wanted to make this equally likely, we'd put red in there. If we want to make it more likely, we put black or orange. And those are just some inferences we can make about populations.